very often, you know, I have heard even recently of, you know, cases in which people said, women don't do well on this show. Women can't write this show. We had a woman, she didn't do well. We had a female director, she didn't do well. We'll never have another one. That's sexist. I was speaking with a group of executives and one executive asked me, if we have a misogynistic writer's room, are we doing any of our female writers a disservice by forcing them onto that staff and um, having them work on the show? I said, let's think about that statement. You're willing to have a misogynistic writer's room and you're saying that your company's core values allow that. That's a failure of leadership. And the other thing to think about is that if that woman does not continue on that show, her option is not picked up, she's fired, they didn't like her script, the men on that show, the showrunners, the executive producers, will say she couldn't cut it. And what happens is the studio will buy in, or the network, will buy into that cover story and blackball that woman from all other shows that they make. Well, we heard she was difficult. We heard she didn't do well. We heard she couldn't hang with the boys. And that's how the system perpetuates itself, is that nobody wants to say they're sexist or racist. So they come up with other reasons of why this person isn't going to get the job. And because these conversations are inherently complex and difficult and challenging and threatening to the status quo, people buy into those cover stories. So the problem is not that there's not talent out there. There's a tremendous amount of talent. But the talent is not being groomed. The talent gets fed into the system and then it washes out. And we have a constant replenishment of new talent, of women, of people of color, LGBT, people with disabilities. They get into the system, but they immediately get washed out. And we have a turnover at a lower level and people are not getting the opportunity to fail up. People are getting their failures pinned to them. I'm very involved in staffing writers' rooms. I, I speak about trying to bring in more diversity into the writers' rooms and looking for gender parity. So a few years ago, I, I started saying, okay, well, we need to talk about this. And people were coming up with different programs and, and everything, but I think we really formalized our our discussion about three to four years ago where we started saying, okay, how are the writers a part of the equation? And, and, and I started, you know, I realized that what happens is people feel very threatened when you bring this topic up. And I have spent a lot of time going around to different groups around Hollywood. I've been, I've met with studio presidents. I've met with many studios, I've met with networks, I've met with the big agencies. I was just at an agency yesterday. I've really been talking about this. I've been talking to the writers. And what happens is everybody says, I'm all for it. It's the other guy or the other person who is a problem. So the networks blame the writers, the showrunners. The showrunners blame the agencies and the studios. The studios are blaming the, the showrunners and the networks. You know, everybody's blaming everybody else and they all have a safe zone in which they can say, I'm not racist or sexist. There's no accountability. And so what happens a lot of times is people create some exciting new program and then they go after that program. 
and it gets more people into the system and then people get washed out of the system. And this has been going on since Hollywood began and, and, and you know, people feel the numbers are improving. They're really not. We haven't seen improvement in the uh, employment numbers to date. There's no real change. So what I have come to understand is that I want to be part of the solution. 